All right, let's get started, please. Um, I decided since it's spring semester, I'm going to wear short sleeves here at least once, you know, so taking advantage of the warmth today. I guess it still may snow or something tomorrow, but we'll <laughs> uh, deal with that. Um, I hope you're all hanging in there towards the end. I realized I came sauntering in today. You know, this is lecture 40, right? It's not my first time in this room, and I see Jess down here, and I'm like, oh, I wonder why she's not setting up the gear. And then I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to bring the gear. Like, I had to run back and get get the video gear. It's like the first like the first day again or something. I don't know. So I'm I'm a wreck, I guess, is all I can say. Um, all right, so today I want to talk about, we've done a little bit of drawing on these J panels with images, and I want to do a little more general drawing with lines and circles and things like that. Um, it's kind of stuff we're going to be drawing some circles and lines for this last assignment, which I still need to get written up. I'm still, every time I try to do something, I'm like, no, that's too complicated. And then I try something else, like, no, that's too complicated. And somehow, uh, so you should be happy you don't have the assignment yet. Otherwise, it'd be like something complicated, right? Um, anyway, I'm hoping it's going to be something pretty straightforward. I'm close. I just need to kind of put the pieces together. So I'll, I should get that out this afternoon, hopefully. Um, this is our final project. So this is the final project. It's really just like a final assignment at this point, right? It's nothing special. But, but it's, 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 you know, maybe more, it's a culmination of what you've learned so far. Do we, do we have an in-class final test? Do we have an in-class final test? Yes, we have a final test on the Friday of finals week, right? So the last day of classes is next, not this Tuesday, but the next Tuesday. We'll probably have a review lab on that Tuesday. And then Wednesday should be a reading day kind of thing. Um, actually, if you're interested, the capstone senior projects are shown upstairs in the cafe area there on Wednesday. So if you want to see what senior CS people are doing, go take a look at that. Then I don't know what's going on for your finals, but ours is Friday. Anyone know the time? I'm thinking 10.30 to 12.30, but... I have it listed somewhere, I think. Yeah, sort of in the morning, so it's in this room. Uh, and we'll have more details about that, obviously. Right? So it's a, cult, a cumulative written paper test. All right. Any others? Well, that's this guy here. <laughs> no more questions. <laughs> so we've seen how to draw an image on a J panel. And the important thing is that you override this paint component method, right? So if you, there's a lot of sort of bad advice on Stack Overflow where people in, in their code are grabbing this graphics context um, through some call, doing something to it, and it kind of works, but it's, it's not in the right order. So you really should be overriding this paint component method <coughs> down here, and the system takes care of when it redraws the, uh, the stuff for you. Right? That's, you let the system handle the details, basically. And in there, you might remember, we paint component for the super, so that the super is the J panel that we're inheriting from, uh, typically. And then we were drawing an image uh, on this G thing here. Okay, So we know how to draw images uh, a little bit, um, and we'll be using that again, but uh, we want to do more general kind of drawing. So first of all, you know, what is this? graphics G thing, right? So it's just sort of this mysterious thing that gets sent to this method by the system, apparently, because we're not doing anything with it. And it's what people call a graphics context. Um, and the, basically, it's called that because it defines how things get drawn. So it's the context in which drawing happens. So there might be things like the coordinate system defined in that G thing. There might be some colors, fonts. Um, those, you know, how, how far do we fancier things that use the methods of Graphics 2D, you have to cast it to a Methods 2D. Just kind of like when we had our J button. So when we wanted to have a J button or a light button come in and, and it, was, it was an object, we would cast it to be a light button from an, some sort of object. <coughs> and store it in a light button uh, reference. Right, this is light button, same thing here. So same kind of thing here. Uh, we're passing in G as a, the most general base type, super type here, 
And really, that graphics G is a reference to a graphics 2 object that's the implementation of the object. And if we want to use the cool things that are defined in graphics 2, 2D, then we have to cast it to be a graphics 2 object. All right, so I'll, I'll show you how that, that works in a second. Uh, in this graphics context, the coordinate system is the origin on the upper left corner of the screen and goes down. So that's a little uncomfortable. Normally, in elementary school, we learn, you know, well, first of all, most graphs look like this, and we have 0, 0 in the center of the screen or something. And at the very least, uh, we ignore the other quadrants, and our, our coordinate system looks like this, with x getting bigger this way and y getting bigger this way. But all of a sudden, they're drawing it in the other direction. So you just have to get used to that, OK? And in fact, you can kind of overcome that. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute here. All right, so let's, let's draw something. Okay, so I have here a class drawing that extends J panel, kind of like we've been doing. And in the constructor, we're going to initialize the J panel with a super call. In main, I'm setting up a frame to handle this thing. So I have a drawing frame. And then I create a drawing object. And then I put that drawing object in the frame and pack it and make it visible. So same kind of standard boilerplate we've been using almost for all our, our applications so far. And I set the size to 500 by 500 and make it close. And if I run it, I get our, our beautiful thing that doesn't do anything, right? So that's just a plain old J panel. So if I want to, uh, draw something, first I have to override override the public void paint component. And hey, there's a lot of you that are going to get confused because another option is paint components. That's a legal thing you can override in the system, but it doesn't do the same thing. I'm not exactly sure what it does next, except it doesn't make your code, your drawing show up on the screen like you want to. So, don't get confused and autocomplete to paint components. Just paint component, okay? And here we're going to take in a graphics G object. And why are we complaining here? Duplicate. Oh, there it is down there. <laughs> okay. So I have got my graphics G. And I'm calling the super call, right? This paints sort of the background and stuff like that on the component, the J panel. And then I'm going to cast this G graphics object to be what it really is, which is a graphics 2D object. So you, you know, just, just let that happen, right? Just uh, we want to use this like a graphics 2D object, so we're going to cast it to be a graphics 2D object. And it really is a graphics 2D object, so we're OK doing that, that cast. Okay. Then, let's say I want to draw something. Uh, through the graphics 2D object, I'm going to have a lot of options here. Uh, there's like a draw stuff, draw arc, draw image, draw oval, draw polygon, draw string, all sorts of things. So I'm going to uh, do what's called a fill oval. So in other words, I want an oval shape that's filled and not just the, the outline of it. And for this, I have to give an XY location and how big it is. So I'm going to say I want it to be x 100, y 200, and let's make it sort of a nice big uh, circle. And if I run this, <coughs> oh boy. Pretty amazing how I could take that error about pumping events through AWT and immediately realize there was a semicolon error. For <laughs> All right, so this is 100 over and 200 down. And in fact, let's make it go like 50, well, 50 down, make sure we believe this coordinate system. What else is complaining about there? You have your other window still open. Uh, so now it's only 50 from the, from the top here. My other window, all right, that should be all right. Let me run it and see if it's still, OK, that was just some scrolly red stuff going by. All right, so it's pretty easy, right? 
I just find the thing I want to draw and I draw it. And so let's try another one. Uh, let's see. Uh, to fill oval. Let's see. What's the border called? That's maybe draw oval. Draw oval. Oops. Draw oval. Let's put it in a slightly different spot. Two hundred. Two hundred. Thirty. And you know, actually, it is an oval, right? So I can I can make a squished shape, and it's okay. Uh, so there's a little tiny outline there. Right? So the outline is different from the interior part, and you have to do it in sort of two stages if you, if you want to. And in fact, I can set colors on those. Like I can say, uh, graphics 2D set color. Color red. No, I have to import that. All right. So if I run that, you get a red thing, right? Now, notice that one curious thing about this is that this graphics context has state. In other words, it remembers things. And in some ways, that's the important thing here. So if I were to draw another oval down here in yet another position, Notice that's still red, right? So as soon as I say draw things in red, everything I draw after that is red. It's not like I do it on a per object basis. So I'm saying set the context to be red drawing and then draw some stuff. And then I can set it back to black, but it's gonna stay like that until uh, it changes, right? So that's, that's a different model than some things where you're always sort of specifying it per drawing call. This is really just saying change the internal state and remember this thing that we're red now. And that's what it's, it sticks to be. All right, so this seems to be my usual thing when I do anything with Java drawing stuff. I end up with a million side running programs. Now, so that's pretty easy to do. Uh, let's make it a little more interesting. Let's make it interactive, okay? So I want it now to be, have this thing follow the mouse around, basically. I want my nice little circle to along with that, so let's get rid of some of this uh, other stuff. We'll stick with a red color here. And you might remember, very briefly, I'd done a um, mouse listener. And a mouse listener looks for clicks and entering the screen and leaving the screen and things like that. But there's also a mouse motion listener. Lotion. <laughs> uh, implements, yes. And I've already imported a mouse motion listener. Okay, so the mouse motion listener has methods that, that know about the mouse moving. Now that's what we want to do. We want to move the mouse and somehow capture the, where the mouse is located on the screen and get the circle to move to that location. So here it's complaining to me about I haven't implemented uh, the mouse motion listener method, so I'm going to click that. I kind of love that, to be honest. Like, boom, all that stuff. I don't have to look it up or anything, right? And down here, there is a mouse dragged and mouse moved. So let's make the snapping of the circle to the mouse be a little more deliberate, so I'm going to use the mouse dragged. In other words, you're moving the mouse while holding down the mouse like left button kind of thing, right? So we, we want to uh, change this. All right, so let's see. So um, I can get the, let's, let's just print something out here. So I can get the mouse get x and mouse dot get y locations. And let's just try to understand what's going on before we try to use them anyway. Like I always like to just kind of do a little output like this to make sure that this is in some form, you know, I'm expecting. And so if I run this, oh, that's all I had? Where's my big one gone? Uh, nothing is happening. Why? Same reason as always. What did I not do? I got to add the listener to the thing that's being listened, right? So I, I was so proud. Last night when I was doing it, I remembered right away. And now, of course, up here, I forget it right away. 
So in the constructor, uh, I want to say this, that add mouse motion listener, and the thing that's implementing the mouse drag mouse move thing is this actual object. And I just want to find out why my, oh, I want to do the fill. Fill oval, let's make it a circle. All right. So there's this. Now I have a bunch of numbers showing up down here. Notice if I go towards the corner. Well, this is part of the application, but it's not when I'm dragging it's when I start dragging inside the panel, it like keeps listening even when I because I haven't like released the mouse. If I start dragging out here, it does the right thing, right? But if I drag in here and leave, I'm still dragging, so it still has captured the, fo the focus, basically, of this thing. So that's a little bit weird, right? I can go, like, big. <laughs> so this thing is 500 down, and, well, it's really 0 to 499, and same kind of over here, but I can't seem to get it there. All right, so I'm capturing an XY, and that seems sort of promising. Uh, so let's somehow take that XY and use it to draw the circle, right? So I need to somehow connect this information with this information. So what should I do to connect those two? Like I would love to somehow say, I can't say, you know, E dot get X here because there's no E here, the E belongs to the mouse event. So how can I connect those two things? This is the kind of stuff you're always sort of struggling you know, with when you're doing your own code. How, how do you connect these, these methods of, a, of an object together? Do you have like a, a variable for the class that changes with the mouse draft? You like, a, yeah, like an instance variable? Yeah. So. Could you just make an overloaded paint component method and have it take inputs of but where does it come from, right? Like, I mean, add an X, Y kind of thing there? Well, you could, you could call it, uh, I guess. You don't want to call it directly. Don't, we don't call this directly, right? We just say repaint kind of thing. Oh. So, yeah, typically when you want to coordinate information in an object, in this case our drawing object, you want to add some, uh, some instance variables. X, private, int Y, and I'm going to set them to some initial value here. And I'm going to use them here. All right, so that's, that's the kind of stuff right, we're, we're sort of used to doing is, is storing information in the object. Really, this is, remember, this is this.x and this.y. Uh, so, we stored an X and Y in here and we're using it in this other method. That's how, you know, we don't have to uh, pass it as a parameter. Objects know about their internal state and our internal state now is saving where the uh, mouse got clicked. Of course, I don't actually have it saved yet. So X equals the mouse event get X and Y equals mouse event get Y. And let's just comment that out so we don't spam the console stuff. All right, so the, so the logic here is that uh, instead of using some set location here, we're going to use an internal X and Y location stored in the object. And then we're going to change that internal location by using this mouse method here. Okay, questions about that? Okay. That's, you know, again, pretty, pretty critical to understand that, that connection and how, how we're structuring it. This could have been some getter, right? Like get x that I would have written for my own internal x and y, but since it's part of the class, we can access those private instance variables uh, directly. So let's run this. And I'm not holding down the, the button yet. Holding down the button, hey, nothing's happening. OK. Why is that? I know why it is. Then you gotta call the yeah, I got I to tell the system that something's changed and I want to draw it in a new, I want to I refresh what I'm seeing here, right? So that X and Y was actually changing, but 
there's nothing that was triggering uh, a repaint there. If I had resized the window or whatever, maybe would have done it, but um, let's try again. Okay. Ooh, interact program. <laughs> Look, I can drop it. I can pick it up again. So does the, uh, the circle or the object start the shape? Yeah, so there is something that's a little funny here that's maybe not as satisfying as I want it to be. You guys, what would you look at this and, and realize? It's not, yeah, it's like I want that circle to be centered on my mouse cursor, not the upper left corner. So when you draw an oval, what you're really specifying is an XY corner and then how big and wide it is, and it draws the oval filling that shape. But this is the, the x, y that gets specified at the beginning. So that's a little disappointing, right? And it's, to me, it's still a little disappointing to me. So let's, let's fix that. So let's make a, a method. Uh, draw centered circle oval. And to draw this, we need to, we need to know about the graphics context because we draw stuff using the graphics context. So I'm going to take in a graphics 2D object. And then I'm going to take in an int x and an int y and an int width and an int height, which is the information we need to specify uh, the oval. And I'm going to steal that. And so, how can I send, so if this, is, if this is the location, and instead, I would like to draw, so right now, I have my mouse cursor, and it's drawing the oval here. And instead, I would like to draw here. What do I need to change? So when you're doing any kind of drawing stuff, all of a sudden you start thinking about these like X and Y coordinates and how you shift things, and you have to kind of get in the flow of all that stuff and figure out what happened. So before, this was the XY location that we specified, and it drew it here. Where is the new XY location that we should specify? Is it this location plus this amount? Or is it this location Minus some amount. We want to draw. We want to draw it so that if this is here, we're going to shift it back so that it pulls it towards the cursor, right? And so the new x y is going to be the x minus uh, this amount. And what does that amount do? It's the width divided by two, right? And then we want to shift it back in y by the height divided by 2. So I need to take this x and subtract width divided by 2, and this y minus height divided by 2. So that kind of pulls it back onto the, the cursor. Okay? So this is where math starts to rear its ugly head for us. So I'm going to draw centered oval, and I'm going to pass in the graphics context, and then the x and the y, and the height and the width, or the width and height, yeah. I don't think you want this not the x in that method. Yeah, you're right. It's just x here. <coughs> Thank you. That would be, it would actually work, I guess, but not for the reason we think it works, right? <laughs> you, could, you could just not pass it in. I could not pass it in, yeah. <laughs> Um, I want to keep this one sort of general, I guess. So if I want to drop from some other location, we can still use it. So it's good to keep things a little general and pass in the information you need here. Um, so if we run it now, yay. All right, so that's now fully satisfying, but there's not, there's something, I don't know, kind of harsh about this. And people do this a lot, they just move a circle directly to where you are, and it's just like, you know, like boom, kind of stuff. And I mean, it's a little hard to see because it's like all, you know, 
we're kind of seeing multiple versions at the same time. But just for fun, let's do something that's maybe a little more elegant, okay? So I want to take uh, let's say a circle was here, and my mouse is here. I want to draw the new circle like most of the way towards that new location. So it kind of it's kind of called this ease in approach, where it sort of smoothly flows towards the mouse location instead of just bam. Okay, so let's just uh, let's give that a try. All right, so in mouse dragged, I'm saying set the oval location exactly to the mouse location. And instead, I want to somehow do this sort of weighted average of the old location and the new location. So to do that, I'm going to need some more numbers. We need to store the old location. So I'm going to have a private int old x and a private int old y. And here I'm going to set it all to start off be the same values using scary change assignment here. And if I just run it, of course, it should do the exact same thing as before, so I'm not really using that value. And now I'm mouse dragged. I want to somehow <coughs> oops, set, where the heck am I? Okay. Uh, x to be something that's a combination of the old value and uh, e dot get. So somewhere between these two. All right. So I can take that by, uh, let's say I wanted to go halfway. I could say I want half of the current value plus half of the old value. And that would move me somewhere, at least in x, halfway between those two, two values, right? That's what the average is, right? Just moving in between. And it's complaining to me. Why is it complaining to me, you think? find out. It says, cannot convert from double, this is a double equation, to an int. So I'm going to just cast it, say, I really want it to be an integer. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, 0 0.5 times that plus 0 0.5 times old y. All right, so we're almost there. We have made the place to store the old location of the circle. We started off being the same spot. We have updated where the circle is drawn to be some combination of those two. And then the last thing we need to do is after we draw the circle, we need to say that old x equals x and old y equals y. In other words, as soon as I draw it, that, that's now the old location of the circle, right? I want to store that for the next time and use it. So if I run it now, uh, it's a little hard to see, right? So it's sort of, see how it sort of trails behind? I can change those numbers to be, let's see, if we want it to be less of the new one, and more of the old one, so it comes in slower. It's like that. Now, you might be like, that's worse. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't go to where I want it to go. But you'll find when you're making like user interfaces, sometimes it's nice not to make everything just be jarring and harsh and, and just sort of instant. You want to have some flow to it. So you see, you know, especially on smartphones and stuff, you see a lot of you know, you flick your finger and it sort of accelerates up and then scrolls for a while and then it slows down or bounces at the end, right? And there's a lot of little things like that that make the experience just, I don't know, <laughs> life is a little more peaceful like this and it doesn't stretch out. So this is, this is really, to be honest, totally unnecessary, but I, I, I kind of like to get a little bit early on some thinking about, like, 
not just, I don't know, making your usual 1980s super harsh user interfaces, but thinking about little techniques like this that can sometimes feel a little more gentle. I kind of, you know, I kind of like it. And I get to play with it, you don't. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> now, there's still a problem here. Uh, that this whole coordinate system, being in the upper left corner, is, is uncomfortable to me. And so, for example, if you're trying to visualize some data, and you're drawing your graph based on, on that. Let's say you're writing an application for a company and they wanted you to show the profits over time. And your graph looked like, like that. <laughs> the CEO would be just like jumping out a window at that point, right? Like <laughs> my profits are, are terrible. But in swing, of course, this is an increasing you know, Y value going this way, right? So this is actually like a great profits chart, um, if you know what you're looking at, but he's the CEO, he doesn't know how to interpret this stuff, so uh, that would be a bad idea. We want our charts to look like that, right? So people can look at it and have a natural understanding of what's going on here. So we're allowed, we could do math, like we could take that X and Y and figure it out sort of by hand, but there are tools inside this graphics context to apply transformations. And transformations are things like scaling, rotations, translations, shearing, all sorts of things, right? Um, and so we can use some combination of these commands to make our, our screen's coordinate system match up with what we want it to look like. So let's say this is our, our window, we're 200 wide and 100 down and we have a point located at 2010, if we want it instead be a, a normal, I say normal, you know, a normal coordinate system, then we would like that to be at 20 over and, and you know, like here on the screen, right? So it was, here, and we'd like to somehow move it to this location. Now, one example of something is never the right way to make decisions about how to make that move. Like, you might just say, oh, let's just add, uh, let's see, 21 to 80, add 60 to it or something like that, and that'll move it to the right spot. Because this is actually 60. So this is uh, 10 down, this is 10 down, right? And this is, that's really a 90, so we would add 80. Move eight, add 80 to it to get it from one spot to the other. But if we add another point, for example, at 40, we add 80 to it, we're like down here off the screen, right? So that's not just adding a number to it, it's not the right answer. So instead, you can kind of think of it as if we are 20 from here, we want to be 20 from, I'm sorry, if we're 10 down, we want to be 10 down from the top to get to the correct location. If we are 40 down, we want to move 40 from the top to get the correct location. And if our screen is 100 down, then this is really at 100 minus 40 to get to where it should be on the actual screen, right? So we think of it as being position 40, but if you want it coming from the bottom, we want it really position 60, which is the height of the screen minus the value of the, uh, the coordinate, and that makes it, in this one we're 10 down, 100 minus 10 is 90, and that's the, the correct location on the screen. So we really want to kind of map it through this whole thing of, of shifting it and subtracting it to get it to the right location. So we can do that using these Graphics 2D tools. And let me say, we could just do this math, the new y equals the height minus the old y, and that's fine. But at a certain point, if you start doing more complicated transformations, like a rotation or something in there, you're going to be unhappy doing those by hand, and so you're better off letting the Graphics 2D um, system do it. And I wanted to just see how that works. So um, we can tell Swing to apply transformations. And so let's do that. 
Let's see. So down here, we have our graphics context. And I want to now make the origin <coughs> be the lower left. So we want our y to be the height of the screen minus the sort of uh, original y. Right? So to do this, we want to make the y be negative. So I'm going to scale it by negative 1 and y. So it makes that, to get that negative value in there. Scale. And I want x to be unchanged. So I'm going to make that to be a scale of 1. And I want y to be the negative of itself. And then we want to add in the height of the screen. Now the weird thing is, you specify these transformations sort of inside out. So the last one that you specify is the first one that gets applied to the xy that gets sent to the system. So it's this weird, uh, so let's look at it and see what that, that means. So I'm going to do a trans, translate by, we don't want to translate the x, and I want to translate the y by the height of this panel, get height. So that should give us back 100 in this case, and I think mine is like 500, so 500 in, 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 in the case with my window right now. So what happens is we take, when it says draw this xy, it applies this scaling to it, and the y gets negative, and then it adds in the height. So what really happens is the new y equals the negative of the old added to the height, and that's the same as this thing here just rearranged, right? And this is really, you know, if you haven't done this, this is a, if you've done linear algebra kind of stuff, or started transfer, 2D transformations are really nicely described by matrices in linear algebra, and when you take that class, you'll sort of say, oh, this is fine, I can do rotations, and shears, and scales, and it all, this, this, this backwards order will sort of make some sense to you at that point. But until then, just kind of, it's kind of hard to reason it through, but this is all you really have to learn. To flip the axes, do this and do this, and you'll be in pretty good shape. So if I draw it now, let's make that point be a little more obvious where it is. Uh, make the y be at like 10 or something. All right, so notice y10 down here, and instead of up here, and if y increases, it's going to go go this way. So let's actually do that once. Let's make it 50. Yeah, so let's click the mouse. Oh, it's pretty good, right? <laughs> That's like clicked in the middle of the screen for a reason there, right? Like, uh, I could kind of fake it for a second and then, woo. Okay, so now the problem is our mouse doesn't know about this transformation, and that's super annoying. Um, actually, I kind of like it. <laughs> so we need to fix that now. All right, so the problem is we need, where are we? We need this xy to go through the same transformation as this stuff here, all right? And the problem is they live in different spots. So what can we do? What we need to do is to save off the transformation so we can use it again with a mouse. So I'm going to make an instance variable to save this. Can you just apply that same mathematical thing when we get to the new y and save it? What was that? Or? That little, the we did right there, can't we just do that math? Yeah, we can do the math. I mean, we'll write it out again. But, it, but, it, but the general way, like, what if I start, you know, doing more complicated things? I want it to match exactly. And so rather than updating the code in two places, I can just steal the transformation and use it with a mouse. So this is stored in something called an affine, what is this, like affine transformation or something? Affine transform. Uh, I'm going to call it transform. And 
just better make sure I have one to start off. Build a new affine transform. And I think if you specify like this, it makes one that doesn't do any changes. It's the, it's the identity matrix. It does no scaling, no translations, anything like that. And down here, I want to save that transform from the graphics 2D context, get transform. And then I can use that transform in, in here. All right, so the problem is I need to put this x and y in a form that this affine transform wants to, to take it. And there's, it has a point class that we can use for this purpose. So I can say point 2D uh, he equals a new point, and the way you make these points are a little bit funny, but okay. Uh, X, Y, and I think that should be it. Okay, so I've made a new point based on that X, Y location, and then I am uh, actually, the old, or hold on a second. Uh, I want to take the, the mouse location. So this actually should happen before we sort of do our snapping around. Uh, I want to do the e dot get x and e dot get y. So I made a point, and then I want to transform that point. Uh, P equals transform, take the transform, and tell it to apply the transform to the point. And so I say P. And then it says, where do you want to put this transformed point? And if I say null here, it puts it back in itself, I believe. If I'm doing this right. All right, so we take a point from the mouse, we apply the transform that we saved from that scaling and translations to P, and then it returns P here, and I can assign it back to itself. And then here, I want to use the point X and Y to do my snapping. So if my mouse is here, that's a 10. I really want it to be down here, so it's close to this circle here, and, and snap it when you drop. So I see if that works. It seems unlikely at this point, but we'll see. All right. So we're basically just doing the same thing to the mouse that we did to the point, and so they live in the same space, the same coordinate system, and they can draw in the same same kind of way. Okay. So that's you know that's all getting a little complicated. A lot of little pieces here. I kind of just, you know, I want to show you a little bit about it so you have a sense of what's going on um, in this, uh, the kind of things you can do in this uh, paint component. You can do a lot of things, right? You can draw shapes, you can draw lines, you can set colors, but more fundamentally, you can also specify like the kind of coordinate system that they live in, and that's important when you're trying to match it to your, your data, for example. So if your data lives in a zero to one space and you're pixels are from 0 to 499, obviously drawing a little tiny 0 to 1 space is going to make all your points be, you know, on the origin, essentially. And so this is a way we can kind of scale it up, scale it down. And you can do weird things, right? So if I, which I don't know what would happen if I said, let's make that be twice as big here. See, it's actually stretched the oval because the Y, the X space is twice as spaced out as the Y space. And so it's living in a rectangular space now. And you draw a circle in that rectangular space, it gets stretched out into a rectangle, which is sort of weird, right? And now it's gone somewhere because my, oh yeah, because I'm not applying that transformation quite properly. That's sort of interesting. All right. Um, let's put that back. Okay, so the reason I'm telling you this is for the assignment which I need to 
release. You're going to have samples that say, like, I'm at this location. They have some attributes, right, like 200, 100. And we would like to draw them as some sort of collection of circles on a panel. And then you pick an unknown one, and you might want to say, here's the closest ones that I found. And maybe we have some way of displaying what those things really are up here. Uh, but we're going to be doing some of this drawing circle stuff. Not all the mouse stuff, really, to be honest, but that was just sort of for fun. But some of this drawing circles and lines uh, you'll be using in the assignments. But I wanted to show you some of the stuff. And I may make you flip the coordinates, depending on what <laughs> it looks like. And so I want to show you how you, how you do that a little bit. Um, so anyway, look for an announcement on that. Hopefully, get it out real soon here. Uh, but that's all I want to talk about today. So.